So people ask how we heat Tangaroa. Um, we've got a couple of ways that we do it, but one of them is this guy. We call him R2D2, uh, but he's a Dickinson uh, heater. This is the Alaskan model, if I'm not mistaken. So this particular burner is a diesel burner. The uh, reason why we went with the diesel burner is because we have a lot of diesel. It's probably our biggest resource on board. They also make these in propane models. They make them in um, uh, solid fuel models. So there, there's lots of options there for that. But um, we use it because it gives a nice little ambiance in the, the main salon area. You have a fire burning. It's a dry heat, which is really nice. Um, yeah, so it works really well. Um, the, I guess these are what's called, these are what are called a draft heater. So they require the heat through the chimney to pull the air through the heater. So this is really important, all of your, your chimney uh, functions. So this is a three inch chimney. Um, the, this one's not 100% ideal. Um, you're better off with a straight pipe. Uh, the longer the pipe, the better for draft. Uh, this one's also got a barometric damper, so if it starts pulling too much draft, it can bypass some air. Um, in all honesty, damper doesn't get used that much. We've got a, bit, a couple of angles which knock the draft down. Not, not great, but it works well for us. Um, I did this one out of um, 304 stainless. The reason being is the the ones that you can get with these heaters, they're pretty flimsy. They're really thin metal. Um, I didn't really like them much. We do a lot of custom exhaust fabrication at our shop, so we made up a custom chimney for it. So this is all really nice thicker wall tubing than what you'd normally have with the Dickinson heaters. Um, and then it goes up to the upper deck here, and then there's about a four inch extension tube on top of that to get more draft on the heater. Um, there's also a draft assist fan. If you don't have enough air pulling through from the, the chimney itself, you can add a little bit of air that way. But uh, this one puts out around 8,000 BTU of heat uh, and does a pretty good job of heating up the main salon area. It, uh, on really cold days, it, it will drop a, a fair bit. Um, last few days we've had like negative 10 degree weather and it's, it's barely been able to keep up but uh, we're rarely in that kind of weather, so we're not overly concerned about that. And eventually we will have a supplementar, supplemental hydronic heater as well. Um, that'll just help keep this whole area nice and warm. So, I mentioned the, uh, the flue extension, the chimney extension. That's this guy here. Now, this wasn't on originally. This is actually what you would get if you were to buy a, a chimney pipe from Dickinson or a marine supplier. This is a, just a, a thin tin uh, extension. This was added after the fact because we were trying to get a little bit more draft happening because it seemed a little bit low. Um, and then this is the, uh, the chimney cap. Uh, we use the H pipe version. This is a little bit better in wind. Um, we get a little bit of wind up here in the Pacific Northwest. So that, uh, that handles that a little bit better. Uh, better for keeping rain out, better for keeping the draft consistent when the wind is blowing. And we get a little bit of black on the deck, eh? A little bit. Uh, we're still working on getting the burn perfect on the heater. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to and figuring it out. Uh, so right now we're, we're getting a bit of ash, so we need to figure out how to get it to burn a little hotter and a little leaner. But uh, we're getting there. It's getting better every day. So, I've already shown you the Dickinson stove upstairs. This is our main heater. This is what does all the heavy lifting in the boat. This is an ITR Chinook heater. Uh, these are brilliant. I uh, can't say enough about them. Um, they're, they heat really well. They, this one's got, I think, a 50,000 BTU capacity. Um, and it also does our domestic hot water. So we have on-demand hot water. We can have showers for days provided we have water and we don't run out of hot water. Best thing as well, this runs off of diesel. So. We don't have to worry about running our engines to get hot water. We don't have to worry about powering a 110 volt uh, heater to get water. This does it all. Uh, so this is what's called a hydronic heater. What that means is it has a boiler inside of here, runoff diesel, heats hot water, and then it circulates the hot water through the boat. Uh, this unit was not made quite for what I'm doing with it. We run a dual loop system, which means we flow hot water to the back of the boat, and we flow a separate loop of hot water to the front of the boat. So what I've had to do is add a couple of pumps in here to separate out the two flow for the front and the rear. So one of these pumps will do the rear loop, one of these pumps will do the front loop. 
Um, so what happens is that hot water gets circulate through the boat and then in each room there's a little heater uh, that the water flows through. It's got a fan on it. Um, so each individual room has its own heater unit and its own thermostat. So they're all individually ability or all are individually able to be set for whatever temperature uh, whoever likes. So this is um, definitely a, a good unit. We've been really happy with this one. What's the exhaust there? Uh, that is, <laughs> <laughs> that's another uh, custom exhaust that we've done. Um, it's a, it's a, a Magnaflow muffler, so it's a car muffler on there, but it works really well for what we use it for. Um, we did a test fit and uh, built up our own gooseneck for the exhaust. And then uh, Sean at the shop welded it up for us and he took it upon himself to put a shop logo on the side of it. Carmina Performance. The Carmina Performance logo. Um, and then fabricated my own through holes. Um, so that's a, an isolated through hole. Uh, I don't use the through hole for intake. I've got a separate intake tube on the far side there. Um, so the, the metal is just there to, to isolate the heat from the, the pipe coming through. Uh, stainless steel does a pretty good job of insulating heat. So yeah, love this heater. It also has an option to hook up 110 volt um, supplementary heating elements. So if you're at the dock, you can get a little bit extra heating off of it. It's pretty minimal, but um, as you can see, we, we've never bothered to hook it up yet. So Have we ran out of hot water before? Uh, nope, never run out of hot water. Um, everything's been pretty good. And we've got, uh, so far, <laughs> which is pretty much just a little bit of hot water run this summer and the winter, we've got 1,234 hours of runtime on this guy. So it's uh, it's been trucking along pretty good. Uh, but like I said, it's it's fantastic heater. Can't say enough good about them. Okay, show us the fans they come out of. Okay, I'll show you them. Okay, go. So we're telling you guys about the actual individual heat units. Uh, this is what we have in each cabin. Uh, these are the smallest of the cabin fans from ITR. They're about an 8,000 BTU unit. They've got their own fan on them. They've got a thermostat built into them, so they'll only turn the fan on when they sense hot water flowing through. And uh, yeah, you've got two fittings here, one for water in, one for water out. And it's just uh, the loop goes through the whole boat. It'll go into one, out the other, and then off to the next heater. And same thing, in and out until it loops back around to the heater. Do they again. run constantly? Uh, they don't, or they shouldn't. Um, these, like I said, they are thermostatically controlled with a standard wall thermostat. Um, provided the heat in the room is high enough, they will shut off and turn on throughout the day. Uh, one complaint that I have with these units is they're fairly noisy. Uh, these are, for just a little computer cooling fan, they make a lot of noise. So it's, uh, that's the, the one downfall of this system is the, the noise generation. So when you have that cycling on and off at night, it can be disruptive. So I'm looking into options for quieter fans right now, but otherwise, that's what we use. So this will just show you what these units look like uh, when they're actually mounted. Uh, so we've got nice hot air coming out of them. Um, yeah, they're pretty simple. And we just use a standard household thermostat. Normally, normally they're mounted, but uh, unfortunately we're kind of in the middle of a refit, so we're not 100% sure if that's where it's going to stay. So that's where it is for now. So here on Tangaroa, we had this whole aft deck replaced, had a lot of holes in it, so we got new, new decking in. Um, we needed insulate, so we've used uh, the, the rigid foam insulation. Uh, this stuff is, I can't remember the exact R value of it, but um, it's pretty decent. Uh, we've got an air gap in behind it as well. Um, as you know, aluminum, not so good at insulating heat, so it gets cold in here. Um, eventually we'll have this all sealed up where we'll, we'll have a, a lot better energy efficiency in here. But uh, for now, we've started to do the insulation, and uh, next up, ceilings. Hey everyone, I hope that answered your question. Please join us on board Tangroa. Subscribe, we have a weekly vlog, and you can follow our adventures. We'd love to have you as crew. See you out there.